right? It's speaking up, and we talk about why, uh, sorry, what was Galileo thinking about 400 years ago today? Thank you. Well, I'm going to start out with the answer. In November 1609, Galileo was undoubtedly thinking about the telescope a lot. <laughs> He was at the time a 45-year-old math professor in Italy and very little known outside of Italy. He may have heard rumors of someone in the Netherlands working on a telescope in 1608, but it wasn't until summer 1609 that he got more details when a Dutchman tried to sell three power telescopes in Italy. Once he knew the telescope had two glass lenses in a tube, it took him only one evening of work to make one himself. Soon, just using his knowledge of optics and some good Italian glass, he built a 10-power telescope and then that would magnify, one that would magnify 30 times. And this is what 30-power looks like. The very small word Galileo on the, on the left is 8-point. The very large GA on the right is 240-point. But back to when Galileo had only a 3-power telescope. You are looking at a draft letter written by Galileo addressed to the Doge of Venice in August 1609 on the topic of how the telescope could be useful to him. This manuscript is right here at the University of Michigan. Galileo wrote that he had invented this incredible spyglass that he would show the Doge but otherwise keep secret. He said that with it, you could see very far away an enemy long before they knew you were there, whether on land or on sea. The letter was finalized, copied, and sent to the Doge. It still survives in Italy, but Galileo made a change. Instead of cloaking it in secrecy, he made the, the, uh, a big event of it, showing the telescope at the top of a church tower to leaders in Venice. As his telescopes improved, Galileo turned them to the heavens. Around October, he started looking intently at the moon and made detailed drawings of it. This with a telescope that probably let him see only a quarter of the moon at a time. But what about the rest of the manuscript, the part below the line? This piece of scrap paper lay around Galileo's house for a few months. Then he brought it out in January 1610 and used the blank space when he needed a, somewhere to help him figure out some weird sightings near Jupiter. On the night of the January 7th, Galileo had noticed that there were three things in a straight line across Jupiter. When he looked at it the next night, they were all on one side, and Jupiter had moved in the wrong direction. Here you see the seventh and eighth marked on the left. He must have wondered, are the tables wrong? Are these different stars? Is something else going on? Galileo recorded more data. Here we have how he saw these objects between the 12th and the 15th of January. By then, he was sure they were the same objects because they were always close to Jupiter. Some nights he saw four instead of three. So on this page, Galileo collected the data he had on these objects. But here is his genius. Look at the additional drawings down in the right-hand corner. Scholars tell us that here Galileo tried to make sense of his data in an astounding way. He tried to imagine what the movement of these objects would look like if they were viewed not head-on looking at Jupiter, but from above. Now he saw that the data would fit if the objects were going around Jupiter. In a different set of manuscript notes, he switched to writing in Latin this very night, January 15, 1610. Why? Because it was publishable. For the next six weeks, he worked frantically. He wanted to be the first to explain the telescope, show the moon's details, and most startling of all, to tell everyone that he had proof that objects were orbiting Jupiter, which demolished the idea of the church and others that the Earth was the center of everything. Here it is, his pamphlet, The Starry Messenger, finished in March, two months after that fateful night of January 15th. Galileo cleverly dedicated it to the Duke de Medici and even named the four moons of Jupiter after the Duke and his three brothers. The pamphlet is famous for its drawings of the moon, but halfway through a paragraph begins on the night of January 7th, followed by pages of observational data, and then Galileo's argument from the data that Jupiter had moons. Galileo was about to become one of the most famous people in Europe, thanks to the telescope. But he wasn't thinking about that yet in November 1609. This manuscript shows he was taking care of business, he was thinking about his work. 
Come help, us come help us celebrate this manuscript's 400th birthday this year. It is now on display in the new Audubon room in the Hatcher Graduate Library, first floor. And I brought facsimiles if anyone wants a copy. Thank you. Thank you.